Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For all of you guys that don't know me, I'm Mina. Very, very nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. I am a certified life and relationship coach for all of you guys that are new to my channel. So welcome. So today's topic that I wanted to discuss with you guys is something that I've just kind of been seeing trending a lot and I've been getting a lot of questions about. And it's typically from women and men, um, but typically more on the women's side where they want to know, you know, are they seeing the red flags of not moving forward with this person in terms of marriage? You know, are these red flags? What are the typical red flags? What do I do and how do I move forward? So I wanted to give you guys my top five red flags to look out for when you're thinking about getting married with this person. And again, these are in no particular order. I could honestly give you 10 or 20, but I think I'll make this a part two to this video because I think these are important. I think that people get something out of it and something that's easily missed when we're in love and we have this whole puppy love stage and maybe we have a gut feeling, but we're just not following it because we're confused. There's all types of emotions, feelings, you know, so on and so forth. So I'm, so I'm here to give you guys my advice on that. Number one, you guys don't see eye to eye when it comes to finances. So you guys are just two different levels financially. And these problems arise like way before the marriage. You don't think about finances when you're first dating this person or you're still living with your parents and he's living with his and you know, you're still young and you're not adulting yet, having all of the responsibilities where you have to pay and rent or you have to pay your school loan or you have to pay for your new car. Obviously, those things don't come into play as much because you're still kind of growing up yourself. But when it comes down to marriage, you have to have your ducks in a row. And a lot of times, these signs pop up way early in advance, okay? And it's okay to spend a little bit here and there and enjoy and spurge and so on and so forth. But when you have somebody who's very inconsistent or you're constantly seeing them buy things that they don't need and then run out of money and then complain about it, it's just such a bad sign because clearly, clearly they don't budget. Clearly they're just living in the moment and not really caring about the future. Like if you have a certain budget, you follow it, you stick to it, you're good. You'll get you through until you get paid next time. But if you're just blowing your check as it comes and then taking the last whatever X amount of money you have and then really, really being scarce for the next one, two or three weeks, that's a problem. That's a huge problem. So if you're the one in the relationship that is there saving and your partner is blowing his or her money because they just don't find it important to go and save and prepare for the future, that is a huge red flag, okay? You shouldn't be the one carrying this person around. They should know at some point that, hey, I plan to be with this person or just in general, I plan to be with somebody else, let's just say. It's wise to put some money to the side. It's wise to maybe invest or save. It's not about me anymore. Like I eventually would like to have a house or a townhouse or a condo. I would like to upgrade my car. I'm going to need it because I will get married and possibly have children. Those things are important. So if somebody's not thinking about that, they're just kind of going with the flow that's going to cause a lot of problems down the line. You can't just have one person that's financially responsible and carrying the other person. It's just not fair. That's one person carrying the burden. And it's a two-way street. That's what you have your partner for, your husband, your wife. So you guys are on the same page when it comes down to it. You guys have set goals. Hey, we're getting married. Within three years, we want to have a house and we have a down payment for it. And this is how much we're going to be spending on it. Okay, we're getting married, let's upgrade our car or our cars, okay? We're getting married, so I think this would be good. We're getting married, so that would be good, but that all costs, so how are we gonna go about that? And if you're disagreeing with that prior to the marriage and you see no improvement, and it's more like dealing with a kid that's just blowing his first or second paycheck every week, huge red flag. Number two, you're not connecting physically. And now when I say physically, I literally mean physically. But, but prior to the physical, at this point, you already know that the emotional connection has just disappeared. Okay. If you're not connecting physically, most likely you're not connecting emotionally. Now, unless there's some sort of like major life change or somebody got ill, somebody got sick, that kind of a thing, whole different ballgame. But if you guys are perfectly healthy and you're not connecting physically prior to marriage, 
that is a huge red flag, okay? Now again, is being intimate the number one thing to have in a marriage? No. Is being intimate the number one thing to have outside of marriage? No. Couples will survive without making that number one, but it is a big chunk of it. It still is important. That's how you express yourself. That's the person you are with. So if one person is completely drawn away from it and the other person is needing it, huge issue. Or if both individuals are not interested in it and at one point they were, something's got to give. That's just not normal. If at one point there was a ton of physicality and there was something you guys were doing regularly and now it's just crickets, now both people just sleep on one side of the bed and then the other, huge red flag. That could open up another can of worms, probably for another video, but that's something major because you want to be connected physically, emotionally, spiritually with this person. So if you guys are already losing attraction prior to marriage, there's nothing going on there, you may want to stop, really sit down and talk about this one. Number three, there's emotional cheating already taking place. What does that mean? That means you are already having problems with your significant other, the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, and you're reaching out to a trusted third party. And this is most likely the opposite sex, somebody that's not family. But this person is kind of helping you quote unquote through the process, but in actuality is really not because you're letting out all of the emotions, all of your pain onto this person. And as much as this person's listening to you and you're venting and it's kind of working in your favor, it's really not because instead of getting closer to your significant other and letting them know about your problems and letting them know how you feel and how you could fix this, you're really getting close to this other person without probably even knowing it at first, okay? But before you know it, you're really getting to know one another. It's like you go to that person to vent, to kind of lean on them, to be with them because they're responding to you. They're there for you. They're there emotionally for you. They're there mentally for you. A lot of times before you know it, they're gonna be there physically for you, especially if you're lacking in this area of not having any physicality in the relationship, as I mentioned in my previous example. This could be a major problem, okay? People are weak, people are in need of you know being loved and they're just emotional. And before you know it, Things are happening with somebody else, all because literally all of the signs are saying, don't move forward with this person that at one point you loved. Because at times we're just caught up in the love and in all the good feelings and the honeymoon stage and we want it to work out. And we miss all of the red flags that literally tell us, do not marry this person. They're not good for you. I have a better plan in place for you. Move forward. Leave them out. Leave her out don't do it but again we miss all the red flags because we want to do good we mean well we want it to work out and then something like this happens before you know it you're with another person venting talking and then kind of moving on with them now does that happen all of the time no of course not that's not the case all the time but does it happen yes it's just something to keep in the back of your mind something to understand look out for these red flags if you have something like this going on Talk directly to the person. Let them know, hey, I feel like this, this, and that. And if they don't want to talk about it, they don't want to talk to you, and they refuse to meet you halfway, just leave. Just leave because it's not worth it. It's not worth you feeling like crap over it because you are doing your part and then going to another person and God knows what's going to happen there. If you're going to get with somebody else, it's going to be on your terms because you're no longer with this person. You're healed. You're ready to move forward. You're ready to start. Number four, all of your friends and family are literally telling you, you guys are a bad match. Now, has there been situations where it has worked out? Yes, I'm sure that's the case. I'm not going to say that every single time friends and family have told you he's not good for you or she's not good for you, that they actually haven't been good for you. Okay, it may have worked out. Has it happened? Yes, there's always those exceptions to the rule, but somehow it just works. Now, for the most part, okay, if you have literally friends and family who have known you, if not all of your life, the majority of your life, tell you something's off with this guy, like you're too good for him, you're too good for her, something's off with her, I have this feeling about her, 
Like for some reason, I just can't click with this person. Listen to them. Listen to them. When we're in a relationship, okay, we tend to get emotionally attached. We get emotionally involved, especially for women. Okay, not saying that guys don't get attached, but as women, we tend to get emotionally caught up. Okay, so with that being said, we don't see clearly a lot of the times. A lot of the times, we're just looking for all of the good. Like, if you really break it down, we see the best of this person. Okay, they could have the worst habits, they have the worst mouth, they could have the worst thoughts, they could have the worst attitude. Literally, everybody in our family and friends would be like, what, what's going on here? What we see is us walking down the aisle, him playing with our kids, us buying our new home, and us just living this happily ever after life. We don't see all of the red flags. We don't see the million stop signs that were in our face from the very beginning, okay? From the very beginning. They were all there. Our friends all saw them. Our family all saw them. We just didn't see them because we're in love. We mean well, we want to do good. We want the best. But again, love is blind. A lot of times you're going to look far past everything and just see what you want to see. And it's going to take you breaking up with this person, eventually leaving this person to see these signs because sometimes friends and family won't even get through to you. I know I've been there. We've all been there. Okay. We've all had those moments where you just didn't see eye to eye as you get older you learn, okay? And that's important to me. Like, if I'm dating somebody, I'm not necessarily going to ask my friends, what do you think, what do you think, what do you think? But I'm definitely gonna observe the person I'm dating with my friends and, and see how they interact with one another. See how they are around each other. That's important, okay? That's super important. Friends and family will spot that out. Let me tell you, friends and family will spot that out. They know you, they know your personality. And if they mean well for you, so if they've been around and you just know by the friends or family that you have around you, you know them well, they will be able to see through all of the BS if there is any of that in that relationship, okay? So if anything, it's a blessing in disguise. Number five, they just aren't a big fan of marriage. So yeah, you guys have talked about this in the past. He knows that or she knows that your goal is to eventually get married, possibly have kids, maybe move here, maybe purchase a home, just do all of the adult things, right? And they just give you signs along the way that marriage is not something they really are interested in. They maybe showed you signs that they're okay with it, that it may be something that they thought about, but is it a goal? No. Do they feel like they want to get that accomplishment? No. So literally they are giving you the red flags without you even asking for it. You're just having a conversation and just talking about, hey, I want to be here in five years. I want to do this in six years. I want to be there in 10 years. And they're literally just spilling the beans and letting you know. I mean, it's there, but whatever. It's not a big deal. Like maybe I'll get married. Maybe I won't. Like it's just not something that's in my mind now. But a lot of times we see past that and we're like, oh, you know what? They may not feel like that about marriage now, but I'll probably change his mind or I'll probably change her mind. And then we're waiting on this person to propose to us, to ask us to be their wife. When in reality, they've already told you they're not interested in it. It's just not a priority to them. It's just not a big deal to them, at least at that point in their life. Now, again, it could be one of those people that just chooses not to get married ever. And that's fine if that's the case, like let it be. But that's something you definitely need to discuss. If that's the case, he needs to flat out or she needs to flat out tell you, hey, I'm not interested in marriage. Just like somebody would tell you, I'm just not interested in kids, period. And that's fair. You can't just lead one person on and play pretend until you have to actually break their heart and say, sorry, it's just not for me. I know I said before, yeah, maybe, but I know I've kind of been thinking about it lately and it's just not for me. When you're 10, 15 years in, that's just not fair. Same thing goes when this person's constantly telling you marriage is not something I'm interested in. I just don't believe in it. I don't think people should be stuck with one person for the rest of their lives. I like to date. I like to have variety. I like to have option. Believe me when I tell you, this is the worst thing anybody could say, let alone anybody could hear. If you're on the receiving end of this, it's terrible. This person is clearly not ready for anything. 
They're not ready to settle. They could care less. They don't care about you. They don't care about your feelings, okay? Clearly, this person is not a great option to settle down with, to do anything with. Clearly, they're not a good option for you. If they're telling you that marriage does more harm than good, like, do yourself a favor, yourself. Don't even think about this other person. Do yourself a favor and let them go. Like, save yourself all of the drama, all of the drama, okay? Marriage isn't about having to have somebody tied down and in your life because you want to be married. It's a mutual thing. It's a two-way street. You both should be there because you want to be there. It shouldn't just be one person holding it down for the both of you. And I know I mentioned to you guys at the beginning of the video that I would give you guys my top five red flags when it comes down to getting married. But I'm going to give you guys a sixth one because I feel like it's important. And that's just to trust your gut feeling, okay? The gut feeling is always there for a reason. Your gut feeling will tell you everything you need to know. It's so important. When something feels off, that's because it's off, okay? When you feel weird about something, most likely something is off or the person's off. So your feelings alone are gonna tell you a lot. It's all about just listening to your intuition, listening to that gut feeling, listening to what your heart really tells you, okay? Don't look past the red flags. Don't look past all of your friends and all of your family telling you the same thing, okay? Trust that you yourself can make the right decision. Don't feel like you have to settle with this person because you don't want to look anymore, because you think you're never going to find somebody, because you're this age or you're that age. Believe me when I tell you there is somebody out there for you, okay? Don't settle with somebody just to settle, just because you want to get to the next milestone, because you want to do what your friends are doing, because all of your friends are married, because all of your friends are having kids, because of X, Y, and Z. Because at the end, you're the one that's gonna end up with a broken heart. That could all be avoided, okay? So guys, I hope you all like this video. I will definitely do a part two to this one. Let me know if you're interested in it. I'm happy to do one. I could probably do a part two and a part three, to be honest, but I'm just saying, right now I'll do a part two. Um, make sure you guys are liking and subscribing to my channel, all my content. Share it with your friends. Comment down below so I can keep making this content for you. I want to grow this page so we could all interact. We could all share ideas. We could all come here as a safe place, learn new things, share our thoughts. Um, again, guys, if you want me to make something in specific, drop it down below in the comments. I'll be happy to make that for you guys. And yeah, guys, I will see you all in my next video, okay? Take care. Bye.